though the crisis in Libya has also contributed to the flow of migrants to Europe. Thousands of Africans leave Libyan shores to make the dangerous crossing in the Mediterranean. To ease the pressure on host countries, thousands of migrants have been deported back home. The repatriation program is run by the UN's International Organization for Migration. So far, more than 25,000 people have returned to 14 African countries. Somalia and Nigeria are the biggest recipients of returnee migrants. The returnees receive funding to start a business and rebuild their lives. And as the fighting continues in Libya, the ongoing instability is threatening the North African nation's oil industry. On Sunday, a Libya National Army Commander Khalifa Haftar announced several attacks on oil-rich sites in the country's northeast. The oil corporation has urged all parties not to exploit the oil sector in their political rivalry. Fighting over Ras Lanouf and the neighboring oil port of Esada began last week. This is after Ibrahim Jathran's armed forces, opposed to Halifa Haftar Libyan National Army, stormed the terminals. Jathran had controlled the ports before losing them to the LNA two years ago. Haftar already controlled most of eastern Libya, and his forces say they are close to freeing the coastal city of Dena from rebel fighters. There is nothing left here in Dana. Only 50 or 60 people still fighting the army. The last few rebel forces are holed up in their stronghold in the central part of the city because there are buildings that protect them from armored vehicles and snipers. It is feared the fighting in Dana will undermine UN-led efforts to stabilize Libya by reconciling Haftar with his rivals in the country's west. The United Nations is planning to help Libya hold elections in December with a view to unifying the war torn country. Chom Rono, CGTN. Well, let's get more from Egypt now, and I'm joined by Dr. Ziad Akol. He's a political analyst and researcher at the Ahram Center for Security and Strategic Studies. Dr. Akol, thank you for joining us on Africa Live. Libya has remained in turmoil now since 2011. So how exactly is the political instability in Libya now contributing to the flow of migrants from Africa to Europe? Well, first of all, hello, it's good to be here. Of course, the, the political instability in Libya is one of the major sources of, of the flow of, of migrants to Europe because of three main reasons. The first of all, Libya is an African country on the, at the north coast of Africa that has common borders with something like four or five states, Egypt, Algeria, Tunisia, Chad, Niger, and, uh, and Sudan as well. And that, of course, makes it a portal country for, for illegal immigration. And with these political conflicts, there are very vulnerable border security on all these different borders inside of Libya. And at the same time, the political, uh, insecure, the political instability and the military vacuum that the conflict is causing is making a lot of, of trafficking networks taking place inside of Libya making a lot of money, having a lot of interests in trafficking humans and in orchestrating illegal immigration. And at the same time, the European states are starting to fragment on their policies. Italy has a specific policy. Spain is thinking of something else. Germany is trying to resurrect the EU. So the political instability inside of Libya is not only causing an inflow of immigrants into Europe, but is also causing sharp policy conflicts over uh, in between different political elites inside of Europe at, at, the, at the current moment. Right, so what, what would you say, though, are some of the key contributors to the decision by many Africans to leave the continent in search of what they see as, as opposed to better life in Europe? Well, I believe that we can, we can address those main two, uh, the, the, these reasons to main two causes. First of all, underdevelopment. And second is uh, unequal access to opportunity, which is something that it does not matter what the political regime is like or what the uh, GDP is like in African countries. There seems to be a structural problem within the equal distribution of income and wealth. And that makes a lot of Africans actually look out to the idea of trying to take a death boat all the way to Europe simply because to guarantee um, 
more access to political opportunities and more access to chances of better life within, uh, f f for themselves and for their children. So I believe that the, the, that the reasons are within the strategies of development that African nations employ within their own countries. Well, we have seen that uh, incident recently where um, immigrants were denied entry into some European Union countries, though. So how should the international community resolve this issue of migrants? And is closing national borders, though, a practical solution? Well, first of all, the international community needs to reach a joint policy, not just a policy based on the interest of one nation. This is, this is one of the main challenges that is facing an organization like the EU right now, for example, and the AU as well. So the first idea is to actually establish some form of a charter or some, or some form of institutional requirements to manage, inter, uh, to manage illegal immigration on an international level and at the same time try and dedicate funds for refugee camps so that actually even if states do not uh, host policies that actually allow them to accept immigrants then they are at least kept in places that are human enough for them so there is a lot of political and financial capital that could be poured into the equation of countering illegal immigration or at least um, trying to minimize or damage control its negative consequences. All right, uh, Dr. Ziadakul joining us there from Cairo. Thank you.